Hi, fellow Michiganders. Welcome to the first ever episode of Powered by Charles. Today we're talking about energy efficiency, and so I want to start with, you know, from your definition, what is energy efficiency and why does it matter here in the state of Michigan? Sure. So energy efficiency, I think in its simplest terms, is really using less energy to get the same job done. So it's that process of cutting energy use that cuts bills, and it really, at the end of the day, also helps with reducing pollution. Uh, so think of it as a simple way for you to lower your energy costs while really helping out and safeguarding some of our natural resources. It's Michigan. Let's face it. This is the best state. We've got the best natural resources. We want to make sure they're around for our children and generations to come. And one of the ways we can all kind of lean in there is by using a little less energy to get the same job done. To make it easy, consumers essentially deals with a business side and a, and a residential side. To make it super easy, I know there's like multiple facets, but we'll make it super easy. So if those two facets of your business start saving energy, what impact would that have on the state itself? I think for the business and the individual, first they save money, they can reinvest that however they want, and then it really starts and continues to safeguard our natural resources. So at Consumers Energy, we've laid out a plan for our clean energy future. That includes things like eliminating the use of coal by 2025, being net zero carbon by 2040, and continuing to increase our reliance on solar or wind or battery technology in the state of Michigan. Uh, but that future really can't become a reality without every single one of us working together. So this clean energy future is created with renewable energy, and we're building that. And by reducing the amount of energy that's used overall, that's really how our customers can chip in. So there's less demand on the system. The state as a whole can rely on cleaner, more affordable sources of energy. And we don't need to build new power plants that, use, that we'd only use maybe a handful of days each year. And that keeps costs in check and it's better for the environment. And so let's dig in a little bit deeper. So what does that look like and how does it pay off in the end for a customer? Sure, so sometimes it, it's a lot of small changes, right? It could be something as simple as replacing out an incandescent or even a CFL bulb to something more efficient like LED in your home or your business. We know that that saves money. You can, again, reinvest that money uh, in whatever matters to you most. You know, since 2009, Michiganders have saved Four billion dollars, not let's say with a B, four billion dollars on their wow. energy bill, thanks to those energy efficiency programs. But there's still a great deal of opportunity for the state to become even more efficient. Uh, the Department of Energy forecasts that 30% of energy used in commercial buildings is wasted. 30% waste. So if we just work together on eliminating and reducing that waste, we can help businesses save money. We can help individuals save money, and we can all collectively rein reinvest that back into our communities and the state. It, it truly is a win-win. So, Brian, the obvious question, though, is, is in the name, right? It's Consumers Energy. Why would Consumers Energy want people to use less of your product? It is a unique business model, right? So most companies seek to kind of drive up that demand, but consumers are really striving to move that in the opposite direction. And here's why. When you use less energy and are mindful of when you use it, you can help us avoid turning to more expensive and oftentimes dirtier sources of energy. So generating power through traditional means can be costly. Think of the, you know, we're talking now about supply chain issues, the challenges with the prices of fuel sources, or even building and maintaining plants that consume fossil fuels. That's very costly. So by using less energy, we can avoid those new builds and really become more efficient. That helps save money. It contributes to a sustainable energy future for Michigan. Again, it's one more of these win-win. Now, if you spend any time on the consumer's website, you will see a lot of talk about energy as a strategic move for businesses. But I'm wondering if maybe you could kind of explain a little bit more about how energy can be something strategic for a business to look into. Sure. So every business is going to have strategic resources, right? Um, that could be the employees that they hire. It could be physical assets like equipment or facilities. But most companies, they're not going to go out and hire 30% more employees than they need. 
or build a fleet that's 30 percent larger than they'd ever have drivers for. So in that same way, if these companies are putting an additional 30 percent through energy costs that they don't need to, there's really a game changer there that we can harness. So that's that strategic resource. Energy can be a strategic resource for, cu- for customers and companies. And it's an, it's an easy enough way to recapture that 30%. And when those companies cut that, that extra dollar, those, that extra spend that they have, they can reinvest that back into growing their business. And again, that's one more win for Michigan. And Consumers Energy offers these free energy assessments for what we might call in our businesses in SMB, small to medium businesses. Now, typically when you guys are doing that sort of an audit, what are some of the things that you guys find? Yeah, so we do have a complimentary energy assessment. It's a great starting point where you can learn about your energy use. Uh, We'll provide some recommendations on next steps and really even receive installations of some of those energy saving products. So our energy uh, advisors, when they come into a facility, they'll look for those opportunities that you mentioned. Sometimes it can be lighting. It can be, um, you know, how their power is being used, maybe installing new hardware or even new software that can really lead to more efficiencies and, and processes gained. Um, but, you know, it's going to be it's going to vary from business to business. But those experts will come in and definitely show those business customers the path forward. Are similar audits available for people like me, for, you know, a, a residential customer? They absolutely are. And, you know, I think I'm handy. I work for the company. I've had an assessment. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh, did I learn? Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's very, it was, you know, degrading to have, <laughs> have this pointed out to me uh, in front of my wife. You know, it's like, all right, Brian, you, you had all the answers before, but clearly, clearly you missed many of these. But, no, completely complimentary service where an energy analyst will come into the home and they'll start to look for those same opportunities just like they did with businesses. And some of those updates can be things like insulating your water pipe. Uh, better caulking or sealing around your windows, installing free LED bulbs, shower heads, uh, kitchen and bathroom faucet aerators, uh, programmable thermostats. I've got my nest at home. I'm in the basement keeping cool now. So it's, it's uh, you know, keeping a higher temperature than is normal. Just when I come back upstairs, it'll kick on a little bit more. But no, those energy analysts will come out and really point to ideas um, and it's a great opportunity for folks to lean in on areas where they can start saving money. Brian, that's absolutely free, yes? It is absolutely free. There's no cost to customers. And then following that, the assessment will actually receive a customized report with some additional recommendations for energy savings, as well as um, in-store rebates, online rebates, opportunities to buy products that are efficient. And, you know, Eric, the other thing I should mention is there's also an opportunity with some of our more vulnerable customers. This is also an entry point to some of the additional assistance that might be out in the market for any of all our customers that might be struggling uh, to make their energy payments. So think of it as kind of a two-step process. First, we come in and show you how to use that energy more effectively, install products that can make your home even more efficient, and then match you with assistance that might be available in the, in the market. That's awesome. So, Brian, we've been talking a lot about what consumers energy can do to help us save energy. But what can residents and businesses do to help out on our end? Great question. I'm gonna t- I'll, I'll take a brief detour. I'm going to I'm going to tell you a story about my physical I had a couple of years ago, which I probably tell too much, but it was eye opening for me because having my annual checkup with my doctor, he asked me where I worked. I said consumers energy and he kind of stared at the wall and said, yeah, consumers energy. I'm on I'm on auto pay. Yeah. So that was kind of his impression of his relationship with his energy. And this is a gentleman that every time he turns on and off a light switch or a power switch, he's drawing from the energy that we provide without really getting that understanding of what he can do to kind of reshape his usage. Um, and I think there's, I think from a consumer standpoint, it, it, it's natural to not necessarily have that clear line of sight. So we've re- recently introduced Charles. He's a new um, energy management mentor. He's passionate about saving energy and provides really easy steps and kind of bite-sized pieces for how folks can really start to use their energy more effectively and even a little easier. So we encourage folks to meet Charles, uh, learn about ways to save, and you can do that by visiting consumersenergy.com slash Charles at home. And then for some of our business customers, consumersenergy.com slash Charles at work. But We just encourage folks, you know, harness the energy of your energy and really understand how you can make little changes that'll make a difference in your bill 
and again, kind of go to the betterment of the state. And one of the other facets on the business side is this idea of being Energy Star certified. And so, A, what does that mean? And then, B, what consumers do or what can residents do with consumers to help businesses be in this Energy Star certification program? Sure. So if you're not familiar with Energy Star, I mean, I, I was first introduced by way of things like appliances or TVs or windows. But, you know, it's a product with the same quality level or, or better than a standard product, but it uses a lot less, it uses a lot less energy. So in the same vein as products, buildings can become energy star certif- uh, energy star certified which means they save money uh, they use less energy and they kind of help protect the environment around them by in- emitting fewer greenhouse gases so to be certified as energy star a building must meet some pretty strict energy performance standards that are set by the environmental protection agency the EPA so the good news is we're here to help and we can make we can make or recommend the necessary changes and upgrades to become Energy Star certified. So we started this through a variety of rebates and programs to help businesses on this journey. Uh, in fact, I just call it the fact that in 2021, we helped so many businesses become an Energy Star certified in our hometown of Jackson, Michigan, that the city was actually named first for Environmental Protection Agency's annual top cities list for U.S. small cities. So. Uh, there's a lot of great ways to learn about energy usage and how you can save and be part of that clean energy transformation. Uh, and we just, again, encourage folks to learn. And shout out to Jackson, my friend. So obviously the, in, the industry that you work in has changed a ton over the past few years. Do you guys have any tips for organizations to kind of help them embrace this a, the benefit of changing the energy landscape and embracing the idea that energy, in fact, has to change. I mean, one of the, you know, before you get to your answer, like one of my favorite things about working with you guys is how nimble you are in this space to know that change is happening and how you can kind of be on the the tip of the spear, so to speak. And so how can businesses think about being a part of that change? I think, you know, just continue to lean in and learn. So to your point, I mean, this landscape changes every day. We've got new technology that continues to present itself, new opportunities to shift usage, to use less, to use at more opportune times, uh, to harness savings, to harness additional power opportunities. I think the best thing we can all do is really continue to learn on this energy journey. And we're going to continue to be more reliant on power. I mean, everything we use nowadays is, is kind of plugged in. So that doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're talking residential or as a business customer, but don't just have that relationship I talked about with my doctor where you pay your bill and the power comes on and the power goes off when you, when you uh, stop using it. Really learn about how you can make a difference and how you can learn less or use it at more opportune times. And again, I just point folks to consumersenergy.com slash Charles at home or Charles at work. A great you know, 90 second video that'll start to spring into action. Some of those opportunities for how residential customers or business customers can really start to own their own energy outcomes. Because I, I just, sometimes we don't think about it. It's the flip of a switch and, and not much more to us, but more and more, we're, we're going to need electricity to kind of power us into the future. Um, and there's, let's all kind of take the, take the reins and, and start steering in our own direction. So last question, Brian, before I let you go for the day, when a business gets involved in an energy savings program, you know, they're, they're trying to get Energy Star certified or they're taking steps to be more efficient in that space. They've done the audit. Do you guys see any crossover there? And by that, I mean, do they then take that home with them in hopes that their home will be more energy efficient? And what does that look like if they do? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I think the learnings from one definitely feed to the other. So it might start with the business or go home. And sometimes it starts from the residents and kind of crosses over especially in those small and medium business owners. And it's, you know, it might be simple things like LED lighting is a great example because you could do it at home and you can kind of transition your building to fixtures that can have very demonstrative effects on, on overall cost. Um, but smart thermostats, even getting on different, different rate plans where maybe you've got flexibility from a business standpoint as far as when you run, can we move some of your usage to a point in time at which uh, energy on the market is a little bit a little bit less expensive so that you can add to the bottom line, but there's definitely great synergies between those two. We, we know that our business owners are our business residents are our, our residents in Michigan. And yeah, great interplay between those two and those same energy advisors are really available on both sides of the house. So 
Uh, definitely the one leads to the other. And we're all in this together. And we need those partnerships with both our customers at home as well as at work. Brian Lewis, a pleasure, my friend. Have a wonderful day. I cannot wait to catch up with you later on this year and kind of see how all these programs are going. Sounds great. Thanks so much for the time today, Eric.